Welcome back aboard Arabella. Though all the hard work up the mast and in the rigging is done, much is left to get everything ready for a long cruise north. Thanks for following along, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and stop by our Patreon page if you'd like to help us keep telling the story of this young vessel. Robin's morning coffee mug. <laughs> That's not big enough. Steve's been holding onto this double braided line for a while now, and this rainy day was the perfect opportunity to break it out and start practicing making eye splices. Well, it's a little small and the sheath's a little loose here, but I think, I think I got the gist of it. By George, I think you've got it. Ha! <laughs> the boat's not the only thing that needs preparation for Steve and Robin's summer plans. Robin's been training consistently since being on the boat, but Steve has needed to add to his routine to be ready for the climbing walls up in Canada. I can't get my arms wide enough. That was like, yeah, so tricepy. <laughs> Ten more seconds. My abs are sore. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't want to do more sit ups. <laughs> uh, easy one. I like this one. All right, go. We've had this flashboard and we've been playing around with it a bit and we got a good spot up here to hang it. And I saw on Instagram this force board by Pitch Six. And I thought this was a really interesting solution for us for working on strength and training uh, while we're bumping around and while we're here in Harborsport and using the flashboard. So the holds on this are either giant across the top or they're really small and what this does is it measures the force so we can figure out which we're going to do now what our max pull power is at the moment and oh, then I'm so scared yeah <laughs> it's not going to be good and then when we do a workout when we're trying to do a rep we'll know that we got to do 10 reps and we want to do that at, at 60 percent of our max mm -hmm. and then we can use this to read that uh, and i think this is going to be a kind of kind of neat solution for us yeah so, i agree who's stronger you will you will always like make me feel like i'm gonna be the strong one you're not you're way stronger than me you but this is gonna come down to fingers you your fingers i think are are better trained these days than mine i don't know honey i think so you're pretty good off the couch we're gonna find out yeah i'm gonna be pissed <laughs> i'm gonna be pissed when you kick my butt and i don't think so and i've been like training hard so Robin and I can both do pull-ups on the 20 mil edge, so we're going to exert more than our body weight. So we're going to hook this up down at the sole here on the companion weight table. And now we're pulling up, so we will be the weak link. Can exert more than our body weight. And then this is the edge here that we're going to be pulling on. So it's 20 millimeters and flat 90 degrees so for me it's about my first knuckle fits on there 
pull as hard as possible for three seconds. We're going to use both hands. We're going to do a 20 mil edge as hard as I can for three seconds. See, you're stronger. I'm so happy that I am. <laughs> I love you, honey, and I want all the success in the world for you, but I train really hard. It feels nice. All right, so now we got to do the 20 millimeter critical force assessment. I'm going to get off the floor now. All right, what's critical force assessment? Can you explain that to me? You've seen seven, me climb. Seven hang for three rests, and we're doing sets. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Set. Give it everything you got. Make it stop. Pull, 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 pull. pull. Oh, this is it. That's all I got. My forearms are like concrete blocks. Oh, I think I beat you. I bet you did. You were pulling way harder than me. You were you were still pulling like 150 on all your hangs. Yeah, I had, let's see, side by side here. Critical force 95 to 93 and 2,978 pounds to 2,390 pounds. So explosive, single effort, max pull, you've got me by almost 30 pounds. But when we do it for five minutes straight, I end up generating hundreds of more pounds than you. Mm -hmm. You've got the power, I've got the endurance. It's yeah. always how it's been. It's so weird, I wish that like cardio endurance transferred to Muscular endurance yeah, just doesn't. I gotta get it. That's it. We're working on it. We are working on it. This. I think this is gonna be a great tool. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. It's not raining. It stopped raining. I kind of felt like it was never going to stop raining. There's blue skies. Stephen Robbins spent the morning walking around the nearby town of Chatham, taking in the Easter weekend and getting a few things for the boat. Chatham is also home to an important bookstore in the story of Arabella. Back in 2011, Steve wandered into Umbrella Books and found a copy of 50 Wooden Boat Plans, the first book of many that started Steve out on the path that's led him to living his daily life on Arabella. My favorite! Oh, these things are awesome! I want to see if there's um little baby cocks. There are! They're in here! They're 
looks so cool. What a treasure. This is like growing up when I was a kid, finding one of these was like magic on the beach. All right, I've, my day is made. Oh, good. <laughs> Feels like spring. And yesterday was beautiful, and to wake up this morning and have it be clear and sunny and just a little bit chilly, but you can tell it's going to be a pretty warm day. Oh, it's so nice. It has been a long, cold, wet, windy winter. Really, really windy winter. I'm looking forward to some more of this. This is nice. comments this week were a buzz about me using the plastic cutting board up in the rig to mount some nav gear and right now it is too cold to paint a piece of marine plywood or a piece of wood to put up there and I went to the store locally they didn't have any fiberglass thick enough they didn't have a piece of g10 what they did have was those perfect little cheap plastic cutting boards so I know they won't last super long in the UV but they'll last plenty long enough for the weather to warm up and for us to make some wooden ones and get them properly treated and painted, and we can swap them out. But in the meantime, if the weather lets us, we are able to go out, go for a sail, and test all this gear out, uh, which I'm super happy to have. So it's a, it's a for now fix. It's good enough for now, and it gets us on the water and what we need to do. It won't last forever, and that's not a biggie. It's easy enough to switch out. Um, so walk me through the plan for tomorrow. I definitely would. I know we have to go back to Western Mass. Yeah. So today I got boat stuff done. So I basically cleaned all morning, filled up all the water tanks. Yeah. Looks awesome in here. Made a list and pulled out the projects since David rallied that crew. 
And we're going back to Granby tomorrow. And yep. then when we get back on Friday, there's not going to be much time. It'll be the end of the day. Right. And everyone's going to be here Saturday morning, rip roaring, ready to go. So I'm not really going to have time to get that stuff together. So I got to make sure that's together before we leave. Okay. I got most of that. I just need to dig through the fasteners and match them okay. up and make sure that there's nothing that I'm missing. We got all the fasteners. We might not. There's a, we really? need a lot of, well, between the cleats and all the different hold downs yeah. and stuff, like everything just takes a different yeah. screw. Um, so I need a few hours in the morning okay. just to wrap that stuff up and make sure that I'm really ready for everybody. So these are the things that I need to make sure I have fasteners for. So hinges for the aft hatch, because that thing's just been kind of chilling there, and hold downs for the aft hatch. Now, a lot of people have been kind of concerned about these. The last season we haven't been anywhere and in any conditions where waves are gonna be breaking over the stern big enough to take the hatch away. So I haven't been super concerned, but uh, if we're gonna head farther offshore and go to a little bit wilder places, we definitely need the hinges and the tie downs. So we got a hold down for the fore hatch, and we have a chalk to put on Victoria, and a couple little cleats that we can add to her, and oarlocks. Because if you remember, early in the season, I muscled too hard and ripped the oarlocks out of Victoria. So these are a little bit of a beefier design, and the oars will come out of them instead of being pinned. And then I still haven't quite decided where to put this. But this was with Victoria, and I just thought it was so cool. It's a bottle opener little hook to hang the bag to catch the caps and the screw for a wine and that clicks in there so it's the tip just catches and stays put so let me dig around in our fastener storage and see but I'm counting one two those might be close. Three, four, five, six, seven. I think seven different fasteners to do this. So let's go see what we got. Some folks have pointed out how much space could be saved with these, and they are absolutely correct and when we go to cruise more this summer these will whatever is left that I want to hang on to will just get dumped in a container of small screws and large screws and you'll kind of pick through it but right now it makes seeing what we have and finding what we need really easy and the space isn't super crazy critical so let me dig around in here and see what we can match up. All right, I think this is a good start. My guess is that these are gonna be the 14s. I hope they're not 12s, because I don't have any 12s. So these are going into the deck and into the sides of the hatch. So one inch is about our right length. Oh, bingo, perfect. All right. So I wanna get all this figured out so that I can just hand this uh, to Scott or David or Jeff and show him where they go and have them put in so we're not digging around trying to find fasteners while everybody's here in the middle of the fray. All right, what do those look like to you? My guess is number eights. Same deal. These are going on the hatch and the deck. So we don't have a ton of thickness to work with. So let's see how these fit. Nice, all right, that'll work. 
So hold downs will be number eights by one. All right. So smaller than 14, I think bigger than eight. So that would be 10 by one. Perfect. I had to do a little hunting in my random screws bin. This is where I keep the, the oddballs. So I've got some of the big ones and some just random sizes. So in here, I found these four, which are all slightly different lengths but they'll fit this cleat that I want to put on Victoria. So we'll see which one of those pairs makes the most sense. So I'll leave these out, and when everybody gets here Saturday, we'll be able to hand this stuff out. We'll be able to real quickly and easily grab the screws and get this stuff installed. Many hands make light work. Should be a great weekend, really looking forward to it. We just have the boat. That's awesome. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. 